Yeah, sure. Let me just load that up because I'm super slow on things. Um, <laughs> it still says Lunatic. Okay, versus Team Luxury. Sick. So, uh, Lunatic, it looks like their first pick was Sylvanas. Uh, they followed up into Uther, Taronda, Kerrigan, and Arthas. Um, so, overall. Oh, so you're funny. What? Why, why am I funny? I'm just going straight to it, dude. I'm just, here's the here's <laughs> right, team. You talk about them. I'll just put them on the screen. All right, fair enough. Victory oh, you're doing the whole. I have back to. And forth. It's hard to go to. <laughs> all right, all right. Let's let's redo this. Rewind. Ah, all right. So, ban was Illidan for yeah. Lunatic. For Luxury, ban was Viking. Boom. Ban's I'm done. Just help. like that. For Lunatic, first pick, Sylvanas. Dang. They got the Banshee Queen. The light Over on to Luxury, no they got man. ETC and then got Jano. What? I the voice Sick team. Already on the other side for Lunatic. You got Uther and Taronda. Double support, aggressive support with Tyrande. You got that Hunter's Mark. Mm -hmm. So awesome. And then Luxury, you got Rhaegar and Zagar. Oh, Falling up into Lunatic, they got Kerrigan and Arthas as a final up. Wait they got that Rome squad. They're going to be able to hit some buttons. They're going to win some games. And then Luxury on their side, they got Tassadar as their fifth pick. All the stun. Sky order. Temple, oh snap, it's going to be a good justice. game. Well done, sir. Good, good recovery. That that beginning stuff, didn't hear any of that. It's, uh, we didn't so hear it's any good. of it. Yeah. Just Team delete Luxury. it. Um, you know, going back and forth, they said uh, a lot of powerful ladies into this one, and most of them are represented here once more. But Lunatic with the Arthas Kerrigan, how old school is that? Man, that is so old school. But it makes sense on Sky Temple, a map where you have to kind of hold an area. Um, you have to hold the objective. Your opponents, if you're not set up already, are going to have to come into you. So that means Arthas and Kerrigan can totally pick off the first front loaders, uh, the front liners that are trying to run in to try and grab um, the area that the uh, shrine has spawned. They also are great for trying to go start a fight. Like, I feel like they're great on this map. Um, the whole old schoolness of this comp of them being able to lock somebody down is just fantastic here for a Lunatic. And I'm excited to see how they're going to pull it off. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Sky Tempo is one of our bigger maps. It can lead into some really extensive roaming early on before those temples are going to spawn. So sure. you can get multiple kills even before we get to that uh, stage fight. And we have so many potential ro roamers ready to go. I mean, the Arthas character is pretty old school. Taronda, Arthas is a great blow up, especially with a Jaina, but they didn't get the Jaina this round. But Uther on the top of that, I mean, we have so much crowd control ready to go. It's insane for Lunatic. I'm excited, man. It's going to be a good game regardless. Lunatic played well in the series that we just lost, uh, just watched last game. So I'm excited to see Team Luxury, though. As Team Luxury, this is the team that their parents are watching, right? From I believe, yeah, they are All the right. ones that requested to come into it. And who are we to say no when they want to do that spotlight? That's right. Happy Easter, man. Let's check out these guys and see just how darn good they are. Moving straight into Sky Temple, the blue team will be on the left, per usual. It's going to be Cinder. Uh, Bobbert Winston, by the way, is the one that we're um, going to be highlighting this game for his parents. Dragonborn, uh, say Sal? That's how you say his name. And then finally, but last, we're going to have uh, this guy spinning in the bottom right. I can't read his name. I think it's Freezy, but I have horrible vision, so we're going to say Freezy. Boom. Here's a quick tip. Hit tab. It'll make it a lot easier to read. Oh, my gosh, dude. <laughs> the UI is so helpful. We Thank do you. got the Ginyu squad here on the right-hand side of Lunatic. They're all doing a little bit of a dance party, but shot. Ivy Slime, Hospital, Silo, and Protégés are going to be the represent here. Shot actually uh, is, I believe, either the new addition to the team or the current tryout uh, for Lunatic Esports. Uh, Shot and the Bullets was a bit of an amateur team that we saw in the Heroes hype and a few of the Gopher Heroes, uh, but the team unfortunately did not last. So it's good to see him here with the Lunatic. He's uh, definitely a good player, knows how to shoot that bow. Oh, man, dude, Cy LOL, by the way, um, I see him a lot on ladder. He's actually a very strong player, so I'm excited to see him and his Arthas. Uh, but, yep, straight in the lane. He has a guard on the bottom. It's pretty normal. It looks like we're going to be having uh, Savannah's kind of going off in that one-on-one. -on -one. So interesting lane pushers, and we'll see how that um, fight will work overall. But I do believe Savannah's can win this if she's able to outplay the Hydralisk. Um, it doesn't stun it, but you can kill it off pretty quickly. The problem is you just can't take the damage. And she took a little bit too much damage in that lane, but nonetheless... Um, this is kind of an odd lane for Sylvanas. If she just plays it right, she can make it work, but it looks like so far she's taking too much damage. Oh, the top lane, the four-man collapse on top of Bobber Winston. It might be the highlight, but there's so much crowd control on top of it. Now they actually could even pick up the Constellation Burger, but oh, the <laughs> at the end of it, all the ETC just inches from that fountain. He will drop. Message delivered from Hedwig. Arthas now soaking in the middle lane here, gonna try and grab that experience. Nice rotation down overall. Here comes Kerrigan and Toronto potentially as well. 
And uh, really, this early game for the uh, red team, if they are on point two, they can destroy things so quickly. Oh my gosh, I'm scared of the potential damage output. And now you can see they're going to come down and say hello to Cinder. He does not really have a big creep highway ready Ooh. to go. The combo, nice. the Lunar Flare, and Slime is, uh, whoa, going to get a little too low. That Hydralisk went a little bit too unattended, but he will survive and go through it. There are temples on the board, though, Tim. Shot on point with that headshot. Uh, looks like uh, we're going to have Soy up here in the top left corner trying to grab the uh, middle shrine. But the Kerrigan Arthas lockdown is too much. So the middle shrine now under the control of the red team. If they would like, they can split up Kerrigan uh, and potentially Arthas and run to the top lane here as Bobbert Winston and Jaina is trying to grab this shrine. Yeah, the shrines, uh, well, the temples are going to definitely be the big targets. They are the overall objective to here, and you can see they're already starting to wear down some of the siege damage into the mid, into the top, but we don't really have too much in terms of a fight going over them. It looks like the teams are going to be content to just trade them out. Protégés, however, is a big target right now between Freezy and Bobbert, but he will walk away as Uther tends to do. Yep, just barely getting away from the area. And uh, the red team decides, you know what, we're just gonna grab the middle shrine and immediately run down here to the bottom left corner and they start uh, grabbing these giants. Usually you don't want to grab these this early, but if they're your opponents, yeah, steal them as soon as you can. Cinder getting caught out of position as well. And Zagara is so hard to like actually dodge those type of combos mm -hmm. from Kerrigan. You don't have instant mobility. Like Brightwing and Zagara, like the two heroes I'm scared to play when I'm going against a Kerrigan. And right now, um, Hospital is just showing what exactly you can do with a Kerrigan if you are hitting your combos. And yeah, the Kerrigan combo has proven very strong. Five kills in three minutes. That's almost a record here for uh, the stream in terms of kills per minute. But you know, once more, Protégés has been holding down the top. He's been under heavy fire, but so far he has weathered the storm, so to speak. Silo has now pushed in that mid, but bottom, it's all about the Sylvanas push. The split push has now taken out both of those towers. Cinder has returned to lane, but there's not too much he can do in terms of sticking out his uh, neck because, you know, the Lunar Flare, the Kerrigan combo, Ivy Slime there, with that haunting wave can get that positioning on. It's very tough as for a life of Zagar in this bottom lane. Yeah, totally agree here. And we're going to see the uh, Moonwell killed off or the Fountain there, uh, which is going to make it harder for when that second shrine does pop up for the blue team to keep trying to fight it off. If they don't do it well in the first try, they might potentially have to back up and just run to different lanes to get experience. So nice pick off there by Ivy Slime. In the top right corner, uh, Silo went ahead and grabbed uh, the Knights. In fact, he's waiting here for the shrine to pop up first. He might actually go back home, then come back and capture that. Nice setup for him. Yeah, there's no stealth roamers here. We have seen in the past sometimes uh, the steal when you're not paying too much attention to the shimmer, but there's not, nothing like that is going to be happening here. In fact, everybody is accounted for on the map, more or less. Uh, the Cinder is going to come back to the lane. So they're not really too worried about it. Protégés, however, will snipe it now that we have this bottom temple spawning in the next 10 seconds. Yep, both teams grab their bruisers at the, the correct times here. And uh, Uther's still in the top lane trying to push back, I would imagine, to start moving down to his uh, teammates down the bottom right. Um, as this currently will be a 4v5 and the entire blue team can get here. We have Janet kind of lagging behind a little bit, but as soon as she gets here, she's going to be there to help, and we're going to see ETC go in. So, I mean, a lot of the time, a lot of people are going to come down and they want to contest this one. It's almost just more beneficial to push out the top because of this oh, situation. Man. It's a small spot, and that AoE combo from Hospital doing work. Arthas is going to be traded out for, for the ETC, but now without those frontliners, it's going to have to be Team Luxury just falling back. And, you know, we, I see this a lot. It's just when you're going into this with the level disadvantage, it's almost just better to push down with your top bruisers. Well, it's okay to go in for the engagement. The problem is that that type of like trying to walk into the red team um, wasn't done right. Everyone came down to one area, which means Kerrigan combo is supreme in that area. They got Arthas picked off, and they were playing pre-spread out until Arthas got picked off, and they all grouped up. And Kerrigan combo hit two members, and at that point, three of them were just eviscerated from the entire map. You've got to be careful when you're going for those engagements. Or well, you're right, as Jester mentioned, if you're behind in levels, you're not going to win. And unfortunately, that didn't work out for Luxury, and now they need to soak here and try to get to level 10. Yeah, between the Arthas, the Uther, the Kerrigan, it's just so much AoE in such a small spot. It hits so many people. And now we see level 11 compared to the 9. We, that means we have the Heroics at uh, level 10 now ready to go. Oh, the combo Jaina. right through that uh, that tower, and Jaina just jumps to the other, or sorry, Kerrigan jumps to the other side, just destroys out the Jaina. And we don't, again, have those Heroics. It's very hard to fight when you're down two levels and there's a talent tier between them. 
All right, now the, the entire red team here is in the top lane with the Savannah's passive as well. They're able to kind of break down the support immediately here. Zagara needs to be aggressive in the bottom lane, and we see Cinder doing that, trying to push as hard as she can. She needs to at least break down these walls. Overall, though, finally the blue team does get level 10. They need to threaten like they're going to fight in the top lane, but wait until Zagara shows up. Yeah, the Zagara is... is I think she really is on the right track there for that uh, pushing in, but there is Agreed. Arthas on her way. And uh, top, it's actually going to be once more the collapse on top of Jaina, just a little bit too far forward. She goes down, didn't take a single heroic with her, but we do have the heroics now on the side of Luxury. But wow, Silo is actually going to get defeated in this gank, and Cinder will walk away, but he had to use the mod to do it. Oh man, if Cinder had actually dodged the Howling Blast from Silol, he could have won that fight overall. Unfortunately, the Howling Blast does connect, but overall, uh, nicely done as a, he got away from the escape and wasn't getting picked off in any way, shape, or form. And it looks like the Golem might be able to secure the turret. It's down to a couple of uh, points. One last throw and rock. No, it misses. And the red team secures a fort in the middle of the lane too. Man, they are just keeping up with the tempo here. Yeah, and now we're looking at a level 10 to 13 disadvantage going the way of Team Luxury. And again, that's going to be another set of talents going the way of Lunatic. I mean, the experience and the team play of Lunatic is really showing off here up against, uh, you know, Luxury here in the second round of the Go for Heroes Cup 18. But, you know, that's uh, that's going to be Bobbert Wenson as he's going to be the big target. Ooh. The heal does not connect. The Ancestral now on a 10-second cooldown. Freezy's not looking so good at that shrunk little Archon. <laughs> Due to the shrink rate there of that, uh, wow, actually, was how did he get shrunk? Uh, shrink ray from shot. Am I blind? Right? I don't see it. <laughs> oh, yeah, I didn't get shrink ray. I don't know, man. Maybe a uh, beta bug. Yeah. Anywho, uh, <laughs> Uther grabbed the shrine in the middle of the map, and we're also having the uh, red team grab the golem. And you can just tell how confident they feel, man. They walked into that fight, one, knowing that Devouring Maul was down from Zagara. She used the bottom lane to stay alive against Silo. Um, and also, they just know they've been winning all their team fights. They went in hard, and they went on Jaina. Remember, the blue team has two members on this team, Zagara and Jaina, that are really easy to pick off if you're able to kind of read their uh, positioning. And Kerrigan's hit it every single time. Every time. Mm. So maybe it just wasn't shrunk. Maybe my eyes just need to be adjusted. I do need to get new glasses. I do <laughs> apologize for that, guys. No. Uh, no, read, no. Reading out, oh, you good. know, for those squishies, as you said, it can be very devastating. And now, you know, it's going to be a big target here. Say I'm sick. Wow, good mom right there from Cinder. Oh. But uh, we need a big follow-up here. Do we have the stage dodge? Do we have the mod fit? We don't really seem to have anything here from oh, the ETC. So they, it's going to be the re-engage from Lunatic. One, two, three. And it's going to be a domino effect here as Freezy's not going to be jumping. And Dragonborn is going to Make a run for the hills. Can Hospital actually catch that up? The Lunar Flare will miss. Hospital is going to go for it, but I think, yeah, he's going to get stopped. And it will be the survival of the Rhaegar. But four for zero exchange. That is not where we want Team Luxury to be. All right. Well, the red team pushing down this bottom left lane, going straight for the keep. Down at half health already. The blue team, all of them will be up in two seconds here as Tassar will be the last spawn. Do they engage this? And I, I think the answer is no. You just wait, you get 13, and you wait for an opportunity to pick somebody off. It would have been a 5v4, but you're missing a number of heroics uh, if you're the red team. You only have Water Elemental and you have Mod Pit. Um, Archon's about to spawn pretty soon, but still, like, I don't know, man. I, f I feel really bad for these guys. They need to get 13 first, and they got to be a little bit careful here. And Jaina needs to be careful with the positioning. Oh, no, there goes a the combo, and Bobbert Winston will fall. Just like that. She is a very frail hero, does not have that 13 talent tier, no sprint, no ice block, uh, I mean, it could even be the icy veins, but at this point in time, I would definitely take a bit more of the defensive talents, and this is, uh, this is a really disheartening situation for Luxury, because they are down two talent tiers now, 16 to the 12, that is a huge, huge difference in power between the teams. What would you pick up here at level 13, um, as, as Jaina? Jaina? Yeah, uh, sprint, I mean, for sure. Yeah, you think sprint? Um, I think it might be worthwhile. I mean, I agree with Sprint most of the time, but I think even with the inability to kind of dodge those blocks from Garrigan, you just pick up Ice Block and you bait him. But, oh, there we go. There goes the Ice Block. Nicely done. But is there going to be any follow-up from his team? The silence goes off on uh, Freezy. So Jaina will survive, and the EDC is trying to run on him. The Ancestor Healing is a little bit too late, and Silo finally, with that huge Frozen Tempest ring, going to try and get on top of the Archon. Freezy does get away with the Void Shift, but that's one more keep being killed off. Yeah, and so one more to keep puts us now at two of the three are now down 
for Team Luxury. And 17, 13 again, you know, four level difference. We don't really have any kind of big map presence whatsoever here from Luxury because they're pretty much confined to the base. They do have a steady income of experience, but, you know, this entire map is starting to be painted red. Merc camps, Merc camps. We're going to have temples now up as well, and it, it's really hard to justify going out to fight against those. Yeah, it really is. I mean... At this point, I, what, what do you need to get back in this game? You need to get a couple of forts killed off because you want that juicy experience, man. You want to get to level 16 as soon as possible and try to even up the game, especially being four levels behind. The comeback mechanics can really help you out in this game. But um, it looks like they're going to try and maybe go fight for this shrine. Um, they need to get the surprise on somebody. They really need to. They need to get maybe Kerrigan to dive in. After Kerrigan dies, they need to devour all the uh, teammates behind him so they have no follow-up and maybe just kill off Kerrigan quickly. But Hospital and Silo charge in. They just kill off Rhaegar immediately. No Ancestor healing available. Yeah, not at all. The Ice Block will be there for Bobbert, but he just kind of pops back out of it and delayed the inevitable. We don't have really any of those heroics ready to go, so coming out to do this fight, it doesn't seem to actually really matter too much. I mean, four more kills going to be racked up here from Lunatic, and now they're going to go for the death now. Well, Zagara overall will be able to get away. Cinder trying to soak up this experience out on the bottom lane, but it looks like the red team thinks that we can just push into the top lane and maybe just end the game here. Um, and it looks like ETC um, is actually going to go ahead and say in all chat that they surrender here. And the red team will just go ahead and kill off the core. They're focusing it down here, dropping down to 25%, and that would be the game. And it looks like we'll have the red team just go into the next round. Yeah, it will be the Lunatic Esports victory, as I said. It's definitely a team that has been around the scene for a little bit. You'd have to go with them as the crowd favorites in this matchup. But Team Luxury, I mean, they came out, they played to their heart's content. They That's got right. a lot of experience up against a team that uh, really showed us the ropes there on that Sky Temple. So I hope to see them again, because this means that they now have competitive experience under their belt. They have a lot of familiarity with you know the drafting techniques, and they can definitely go back and identify a whole bunch of their weaknesses. In terms of this one, that Early, uh, that early snowball with the roaming, it really did do a good number on them early, and that put them in you know, a little bit more of a tailspin. Yeah, you got to be careful in the early game against a Kerrigan Arthas combo. Mm -hmm. um, and if they can just put their foot on the gas and keep going, they definitely will. But again, thanks for coming out to tournaments like this, Team Luxury. Like, you guys definitely have some potential. I saw some crazy plays there um, that you could totally maybe work on a little bit more, but you definitely have it. Stay together, keep working together, mm -hmm. um, and get your stuff down to the wire.